Hey guys, it's Bishop Shozzy here and welcome to episode 15 of the Local to Global series. We're back today with another episode. Uh, a little more rested now, which is good. I had another day off yesterday um, from recording videos. Got some rest, went back to work. It is what it is. Uh, but anyway, we're here. We're going to try and, and do our best to get these episodes out daily. If not, they will be every other day um, without a shadow of a doubt. But I want to try and continue the, the daily episodes. Anyway, uh, one thing I do want to do that I noticed down here, we still have a creative idea. Uh, we've got a character idea that I would like to use. So essentially, let's quickly go through um, and have a look who's got the worst momentum. Uh, we've got Jerry Pepper here with Chili, which is pretty bad. Even Anders actually has better momentum than him at the moment. Uh, Jack Pride, also chilly momentum, uh, which is concerning. Even Warpiece has cooled at the moment, which is not great. So I think we'll go with Jack Pride. I, th I think that's going to be the, I mean, it is a big gamble. We also have a likely to succeed, uh, but we've got a little bit of extra time on that one. That one goes until the 26th of December. We might use both of them. I'm going to use this one here on Jack Bride. It is, like I said, it's a big gamble. Um, it was a success though. So that's turned it into warm momentum. That's ridiculous. Uh, with that being said, I'm going to use the other one here, actually. I didn't even realize I had two of them. Uh, but let's deploy this one. It's likely. So that one is also a success. We love to see that. Uh, not as good. Only, only up to cooled but that is a lot better than Chili. So yeah, Jack Pride, he's, um, his, you know, ca character idea there, even though it was a big gamble, it's done a, a big sort of momentum swing for him, which is very, very cool. Uh, and they actually are now gone. So that's perfect. Sort of gets him out of the, out of the list there. Anyway, uh, where do we kick off today? We kick off at 14 popularity in the Northwest. We are trying to get 15 today. Uh, with that being said, let's advance. We've got five days to advance here and we'll get into the next climb. Of course, if you didn't watch last episode, I do recommend you go and check it out. Uh, we did crown a new champion. I won't spoil it for you guys right now if you haven't seen it. Uh, but yeah, go back and check it out. It's a pretty damn good episode. I was very tired when I recorded it. However, I think it was probably one of the better episodes that we've actually had in terms of, I guess, storyline purposes. We we had sort of two really good title matches over the two shows uh, that, you know, really worked out pretty well. Um, and like I said, we, we essentially have a new champion. That was That is what the episode was called. And that is where we find ourselves today. New champ, new title defenses, new opponents, essentially, for... Well, not not really new opponents, but you know we we could do some different matchups now for the for the title. I think realistically for this episode, we should probably maybe even for this show do a title rematch, perhaps. Um, and then depending on what the next show actually is, I, I didn't actually check before I started recording. Uh, we could potentially do maybe a triple threat match or some something like that to uh to maybe i don't know i guess have a, a a little bit more of an interesting you know style of matchup um because i feel like it has been a little while since we've done a multi-man um i think our last one we did was sort of a number one contenders match um and i think it was a montero that actually won that i think montero became the uh the number one contender from that match and obviously, if you haven't gone back and watched last episode, he is the, the new champion. So spoilers there, but I, I did tell you to go back. Anyway. All right, let's get into it. Um, just looking at sponsorship, we're probably, we're, I would say, most definitely going to hit over 1,500 for this month. So that's really, really good. Really good for our, our financial standpoint. Like I said last episode, where. We're really in a good point now where I feel like uh, the, the finances are 100% going to work themselves out. Uh, the wrestling industry is very strong and it's still actually rising as well, which is 
very beneficial for us in our popularity gain, I guess, era that we're in at the moment. Um, we're really trying to make sure we gain as much popularity as possible. Um, it will probably come to a stop, I would assume, at some stage, or at least, you know, slow down massively. I'm trying to think what we go for here in relation to our creative energy. I think we, we either go angle idea or character idea. I'm going to go character again, just because we don't have one. This one's not great. It's, it's only going to be a, a bit of a gamble uh, for Roger Montero. Um, and he's, you know, he's got red, red hot or even white hot momentum at the moment. So, yeah, not really too fast. Uh, we still have 108 points. Let's do a creative finish for a match as well. A near certainty. I don't even think I've seen that one before. Um, near certainty. So we'll go certain for that one. Um, I'm going to assume that that probably is the highest level because like I said, you know, we've recorded 15 episodes here and I have never seen that one. So yeah. Anyway, we've got Al Coleman here once again with another negative in, uh, incident, sorry. Failing to show up for a scheduled meeting with his road agent. That's very frustrating. Um, we give him a stern warning and it actually has a small negative impact upon him, which is very, very bad, if I'm being honest. Uh, we've got some more training for four workers there. But yeah, Al Coleman. I don't know. I don't know what to do at this point. I honestly don't know what to do. So, yeah. Uh, let's pull a rib. Uh, let's go Remy. Remy's usually usually good for a rib. Anyway, um, another thing I wanted to mention is I've been told that we can actually talk to our workers and criticize them. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna ask them and or at least have a look and and see if that's a, a legitimate thing um, because I haven't really looked at it too much I, I don't know where it would be but hmm maybe I'm missing it is it in here No. Uh, one thing I will do is go into War Piece. I believe it was War Piece. Um, and I need to... Is it Alter Move Set? Yeah. Um... Um, no, we want to get rid of that. And then save. Hopefully that'll give him his, his finishes, because I don't think he was using them. Anyway, all right. I don't know. It's just a couple of little things I wanted to look at there. Um, what is our next event, actually, before I get into that? Check one more thing. I can't actually go into it and check. Uh, what is the August event from 2022? Uh, probably be around here, wouldn't it? One more round, apparently. Okay. So, you know, realistically, we, we probably could do that. When is our, actually, when is our end of, end of season event, which is the peak? Uh, October. Maybe we save, I might save a, a multi-man match for October for hitting the peak. Um, I feel like that might be a little bit, little, little more beneficial uh, for that end of season finale, the the big show per year that we have. Uh, I guess with that being said, I'm going to go a six man main event, six man tag. Uh, I'm going to go a face team of Montero, Hangman, and maybe Wild Red Stallion. Or do we just go Remy Sky? I think we'll go Remy Sky. 
Uh, our heels can be Coleman, Jules Knight, and Jerry Pepper, who... Why has he got chilly momentum again? How, how does that work? Because we used the, the character ideas, got rid of that. That was warm. That was warm momentum, and it's gone back down. That, that's got to be a glitch. We advanced five days, so I don't understand how that happens. And I know for a fact that that was chilly before I used it. That's, that's actually, you know, pretty frustrating. Anyway, uh, I guess we'll, uh, we'll actually go with Jack Pride there. That's, yeah, like I said, very frustrating that that's happened. Uh, I'm going to give Hangman the win. The loser is going to be it's going to be Jack Pride. Unfortunate that he's got cool momentum again. Don't know how that works, but anyway, um, we're going to go like that. Uh, Road Agent will have to be American Patriot. That's perfectly fine. So we we'll get that match booked. That's it's a good good match, and we'll do an angle here as well. So we'll have Roger. We'll have Texas Hangman and Remy as well. Cutting a promo for four minutes. Uh, our face team talk strategy. Threat a G and want to take out Al Coleman. Uh, I might actually add Coleman into this off screen, seeing as they're actually talking about him. Kind of makes sense, doesn't it? So we'll script that. There'll be an angle in the ring. Yes, we'll save that. Lovely. All right. The rest of the card's going to be singles matches with whoever, pretty much whoever we've got left. So Patriot will verse uh, Silencer if we haven't done it before which we have not, not in singles competition anyway. Uh, let's give, actually instead of Patriot having the win, I'm actually gonna go to the Silencer. We'll try and bring his momentum back a little bit uh, with a nice clean win as well. The, uh, the two veterans going at it. Hopefully he's almost out of his ring rust as well. That'd be very beneficial for us. Uh, next match is gonna be Dragon taking on Anders. That one 12 minutes as well. Blue Dragon a win. Uh, we'll go open script and decisive. And then finally, opening match will be Wild Red Stallion taking on Jerry Pepper. And that will be our opening match. Cool. Angles. What do we want to do for angles? I think we'll give an angle to maybe Wild Red Stallion. Yeah, we'll give him an angle. Uh, so let's have Wild Red Stallion by himself, cutting a promo for four minutes. Doesn't have to be anything too special. Um, uh, basically, just Stallion saying he wants to become the best wrestler in Rocky Mountain Wrestling. Sort of your, your run-of-the-mill up-and-coming promo. Not expecting big things, maybe like a 25 coming out of that I'd be, I'd be pretty happy with. Uh, so we'll have that there. I might have it after the match and we'll actually work the crowd with the match. Um, potentially might give the, the match a little bit of an extra bonus. Um, yeah, that is it. That is the show. We shall run it. All right, so we start off with a 36-rated match where we have Wild Red Stallion defeating Jerry Pepper in 12-11 by pinfall with a Latoka Cutter. Obviously worked the crowd match there as well. Jerry Pepper with a 34, Stallion with a 32. Not too bad. Uh, poor momentum there for Pepper. Obviously, we tried to do something about that. Didn't work. Uh, a little bit of inexperience there from Stallion as well. 
Uh, but hopefully the, the more we use him, the better he'll get as well. Good stuff. We followed that. Ooh, 28. That's not bad. Followed that with a 28-rated angle from Wild Red Stallion. Basically just after his match, grabs a microphone and says he wants to become the best wrestler in Rocky Mountain Wrestling. He wants to, you know, represent his, uh, you know, Native American heritage. And uh, the fans, I mean, based on a 28, I would say that they're, they're sort of enjoying him and his, uh, his debut over the last couple of months. Yeah, good stuff. Gave him a promo and he's actually, he's actually done pretty well with it. So yeah, happy days. We then move into a 39 rated match where we have Blue Dragon defeating Phil Anders in 11.59 by pinfall with a Dragon driver. Uh, 49 in ring there from Dragon. Uh, Phil Anders off his game. Very tempted to get rid of him at the moment. I don't think he's he's inexperienced. He's inconsistent. He's obviously got terrible, terrible momentum, and he he pretty much always has. And he's he, he's one to cause an issue. All right, we then move into a forty-two rated match. Pretty good, and no more ring rust there for Silencer either. We have the Silencer defeating American Patriot in 12-10 by pinfall with a drop zone. 43 in-ring there from Patriot and uh, a 30, nice 34 actually from the Silencer as well. Um, very happy his ring rust is now gone. Got a crowd heat of white hot at the end of that one too. Very happy with that match. Overall, 42 is very solid. But what I would say is both mid carters. Silence is probably barely a mid carter at this point. Um, but obviously, the experience there, they're both good, good in ring workers. Um, and I'm assuming, yeah, a couple of penalties, and that's it. And that's for physical condition and then declining physical ability there for, for Silencer. So, really good match. Very happy with that. We then go into a 41 rated main event angle. Uh, with our big sort of big four, if you will. Uh, and we have our face team of Sky, Montero, and Hangman. Uh, they talk strategy and basically say that they want to single out Al Coleman tonight uh, as that will be their, their best way to gain victory. Um, and yeah, they cut the promo onto Al Coleman. We advance our main event storyline with a, a very solid 41 angle. So yeah, leading us into the main event, the big six-man tag. I'm presuming a 50. I'll take a 50 rated match. It does even better than that. We get ourselves a 54 rating for our main event here for the climb. Uh, in a match, we have Roger Montero, Texas Hangman, and Remy Sky defeating Al Coleman, Jules Knight, and Primetime Jack Pride in 20 minutes, 25 seconds. And Hangman pin Jack Pride with a choke slam. Uh, Jack Pride off his game. Expected. Uh, obviously, he's the weak link in here as well, but he got a 36, so that's not terrible. Not terrible at all. Uh, Com with a 51. We've got a 51 there from Montero, 52 there from Sky, and a you know, very solid 60 rating there from Texas Hangman. So we'll, uh, we'll pay that. I think overall it's going to be a, a relatively good show, um, and hopefully it will gain us that 15 popularity as well. Uh, but 54 rated main event. Into the overall show rating, what do we get? We get a 49. It's it's one point below a 50. I'm very, very happy with that, as per usual. Very good progress as well, just above my head there. So yeah, we increase popularity in that north... Is it northwest? Northwest region. Uh, but let's address the locker room, so it'll be Coleman again. Uh, who else do we go with? Um, I'm going to go the Silencer, actually. Yeah, he, he's no longer ring rusty, so we shall uh, we shall praise we shall praise him. Financial report: two hundred and seventeen. We spent five hundred on workers. A um, little bit on the expensive side. We used a lot. We actually, I think we only used ten. No, twelve. Big maths. We used twelve workers. Anyway, six hundred ticket sales, very cheap. Um, and we had, I think, one hundred and twenty people in attendance tonight so good show um puts us back over thirteen thousand debt but it is what it is popularity recap here we go 
All right, 15, please, 15. Yes, all right. We are up to 15 popularity there in the Northwest, getting that one point increase. Very happy with that. And we are two points away from going up to tiny size. Hopefully two episodes time. Albeit it could be three. I'm, I'm going to go with three. I don't, I think next episode we won't actually gain any popularity uh, because it's sort of, that's the, that's the way it's been falling recently. It's sort of like gain popularity, gain popularity, no gain, and then gain, gain, sort of no gain. It's not always exactly like that, but that's the general gist of it. Anyway, uh, yeah, Patterson hired by BCG on a handshake to a deal. Good stuff. Um, we had a Grand Prix there from EX2010. Uh, which is interesting because the main event was a tag team match. So... I don't know. Oh, it's grand. Oh, it's two a day three. Disregard. That makes a lot more sense. All right. Uh, let us advance. I don't think we really need to do anything. But what we will do for the main event or the next show, one more round, uh, it is going to be the rematch. So we're going to do the rematch between Al Coleman, the former champion, against the current Rocky Mountain Wrestling heavyweight champion Roger Montero. Should be a really good match. Again, it is a rematch, so we'll essentially find out, you know, what I, what I want to do actually is have a look at the last match they had, see what the rating was, and then see if this match will beat it because I think I forgot to mention, I did actually have to keep, I kept Al Coleman strong for that last match where he lost the title. So he did complain. Not sure if it's because he's maybe, maybe, Morale issues had to play it, a part to play in it. I don't know. Either way, hopefully we don't have to do that this time. Um, I think their their popularity is probably very very close. If if not, I can't remember exactly, but it might actually be the the same popularity for both of them. We'll we'll check that before we go into it. Either way, it's going to be a really good main event. Uh, I wonder if we could maybe do like no disqualification. I wonder if that's actually a match type we could actually run. Just to, just to change things up a little bit. I, don't get me wrong. I liked the the old school feel of it, sort of more more or less having those proper just singles matches with no stipulations. Again, the steel cage is all, it's a go-to for us. It's going to be a go-to uh, because it's essentially one of the only ones that we can actually do, uh, which it sucks in a little, a little way, I guess, because we can't use a, a ladder match. And I am very... Very much a big fan of ladder matches, uh, as well as, you know, the, the multi-man ladder, ladder matches, similar to like a Money in the Bank or a, uh, what is it, Reach for the Brass Ring or whatever it was called in AEW. Whatever it is, I, I do like a multi-man ladder match, even if it's, you know, for tag team stuff, Hardys, Dudleys, Edge and Christian, they, they definitely come to mind. Anyway, I'm now rambling, so what I'll do now is pause the video and I'll skip forward and join you guys back once we have finished processing. Alrighty, let's uh, take a look what we got here. Uh, just yeah, just some more touring stuff. We're not really fussed about that. Uh, most of them are just on our shortlist anyway. So uh, one thing I do want to do is take a look at a, a couple of the companies around. Well, I guess the, the bigger companies around the the North America. US, Canada. Um, so I'll do that real quick because I don't want to go into too much detail. Uh, but champions for SWF, we've got Angry Gilmore, obviously a, a local to global hero for me, uh, back with the CWC. He's the current North American champion. Mikey Lau is the current SWF world heavyweight, which is very cool. And then we've got Ranger and Joey Morgan as the SWF world tag team champions as well. So that's cool. Very happy with that. Looks pretty good for, for SWF anyway. Uh, quickly looking back at TCW, we looked at them sort of recently, I guess. Titan's still the television champion. Spencer Spade is the current world heavyweight champion. Uh, and then we got the American Cobras as the current world tag team champions there for TCW. Uh, what about US Pro? Uh, 
Uh, you've got Casey Valentine as the national champion. You've got Alicia Strong, that kind of makes sense, as the women's champion. World champion is Rich Money. Makes sense as well. Uh, and then Julius Moore and Des Davids are the current world tag team champions there for US Pro. They're also titanic size with 89 million uh, and still the, the highest ranked company in the game. So interesting. Uh, and then finally, CWA. We've got the television champion, Blockbuster. How old is Blockbuster? He's only 34. He looks very old in his, uh, his AI render there. But the women's champion, Brooke Tyler, again, makes sense. I would have either Brooke Tyler or Alicia Strong as my champions if I had them on my roster. Uh, the current world champion is Christian Price, which is a little strange, but fair enough, I guess. Uh, with that being said, I want to I want to see where um, Aaron Knight is. Um, actually, Christian Price's first reign... I mean, it was before, yeah, actually, looking at that, disregard, disregard. Uh, and then finally, the Griffins are the World Tag Team Champions there as well, um, beating, I guess, is it Thunder and Lightning? Yeah, Thunder and Lightning. Anyway, that is those companies. I just wanted to show you that real quick. I know a few people have been asking for that, so I managed to remember it. There we go. Uh, but let's get into this second show real quick. Uh, so let me do that. Tonight's venue going to be Wyoming, as per usual. Normal ticket pricing as well. And then we're going to go for a creative finish. Bit of a gamble for Wild Red Stallion. Okay, it's not great. But it is what it is. We can use it for, for Red Stallion tonight anyway on this show. Uh, we've got wrestlers caught there for Jerry Pepper with uh, the silencer as the judge. We've got a positive impact as well. Blue Dragon and Roger Montero bonding recently, which is good as well. Training for our four students, and that is it. Uh, I think, what are we in August? It's going to be pretty close. I'm going to go team bonding. I was going to go inspire, but I'm going to save that for, for hitting the peak. So we'll do that. Uh, only serve to create new tensions between Remy Sky and Al Coleman, which, again, makes sense with the morale issues there. Uh, and then Texas Hangman and Jules Knight. Creating some new tension between those two as well. That's that's a random one. That's unexpected. But they, these things happen. They're, they're probably more uncommon than they are common, but, you know, it is what it is. Anyway, let us... Book our main event. It is Roger Montero, the current heavyweight champion there for Rocky Mountain Wrestling, taking on the former champion, Al Coleman. Give that one 20 minutes. Uh, our road agent will be American Patriot. Um, slightly lower, you know, psychology, but that's fine. And then for this one, obviously, we're going to have Roger retained. We want to at least give our champions, you know, decent runs. At, uh, at actually being the champion. Um, so we'll auto name that one. That is our main event. Holman is once again unhappy. So I'm going to have to keep him strong again. Um, and what I want to do here is. We're going to book that one. And then I want to go back to show history. And have a look at the Ravenous. So it was a 54 rated match. For Montero dethroning Holman there. So that's interesting. Uh, I wonder if we can actually, we could use this, uh, what's a character idea? Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Um, it is what it is. Anyway, we move on. Uh, Stallion's got 15 popularity. So I think for our second match here tonight, I want to have Stallion versus Jules Knight. Although Jules does have 24 popularity. Interesting. What I'm going to do here, actually, is I'm going to have Jules Knight beat Wild Red Stallion. A little bit of a, you know, a bump on the road to his uh, stardom, shall we say. Because Jules Knight, he, he really has gotten himself over. Um, 
I'll make it tainted just to maybe protect him a little bit and to protect the uh the mystique behind Wild Red Stallion. Um and theoretically down the line Stallion will probably get the win back. Anyway, let's do the pre man event angle. I think I just want to have a stare down, if I'm being honest. So Coleman versus Roger Montero for a stare down. Um Coleman looks like he wants to end Montero. Roger doesn't back down. And the two stare it out to start the match. Uh, we'll go two minutes, three minutes. We'll go three minutes with that one. So chugger there, script angle in the ring, lovely. I don't know if four minutes would be too long. So we'll, we'll go three. Uh, we'll book another match. This one I want to have... Who have we got? We've got the Silencer. We go Silencer versus... Silencer beat Patriot. Hmm. Someone's a game much popularity. No, he's only at 16. I think and he went up one point. I'm going to go Sansa versus Hangman, I think. Should be a relatively good match. Obviously, Hangman getting the win. He pretty much has to. I mean, at this point, it's, it's lol. Hangman wins, really. You know, the old John Cena meme. Uh, so we'll go like that. I might even... I think Silencer can cut a promo, too, so... Oh, he's actually, he's got 92 Menace. So I think I want to take advantage of that a little bit. So let's go with a... What can we go with? I'm going to go with a two-minute hype video. I just want to test it out. I, I don't know what's going to happen with it, how it's going to rate... Let's go Texas Hangman and let's go the Silencer. Um, type video plays. We'll have it displaying the uh, hard hitting action of both Hangman and Silencer. Cool. All right, so we'll give that two minutes. Uh, oh. We can't do that. We need we need professional, you know, professional production values in order to to run an angle like that. So uh let's go a brawl. Sure, why not? Um Let's go like this. Let's have both uh hangman and silencer, let's go with maybe display. Uh, display. And we'll go hard hitting action before the bell even rings. Roller ups. Cool. It works. Uh, we'll go four minutes for that one if it's a brawl. Give it a, a proper four minutes. Chuck that in there. Cool. That can go pre-match. Uh, what else are we going to do? Uh, we need another match. So let's go one more match here. Maybe a, a Remy Sky versus Warpiece. Warpiece has actually got very low safety. I've only just noticed that. He does have 15 popularity though, so... Do I want him beating someone like that? Maybe we go Patriot instead of Remy. Um, and I'll have a, a face versus face with, uh, with Warpiece. Actually, I'm going to go Patriot. Patriot lost on the last show, so we'll do that instead. 
And actually, now that I think about it, instead of Patriot, let's go with uh, with Blue Dragon. We go Blue Dragon. I'm trying to think here. Um, I might go Jack Pride. Uh, yeah, we'll do Jack Pride actually. Jack Pride with an upset. Jack Pride with an upset. It won't be clean. We'll make it tainted anyway. Uh, but yeah, Jack Pride with an upset. So we, we've got a couple of face win, a couple of face wins on the card, a couple of heel wins, and uh, Jack Pride doing some some decent work. I might even give him an angle, to be honest. Um, got promo for primetime Jack Pride. Um, Pride says he needs to get some wins under his belt. The fans absolutely boo him, but the promo gets over. Promo gets over, essentially, is what we want there. So we'll script that one as well. Uh, didn't mean to do that. That completely got rid of everything I just typed. Uh, okay, that was an, that was an oopsies. Uh, go back, primetime Jack Pride. I um, can't, can't even remember what I just wrote, but uh, let's go with Pride Cuts a promo. Stating he wants a win, which is pretty much what it was. Crowd booze. But promo does well. I guess. Promo gets over. Probably the best way of putting it. Fill that one in. And let's uh, copy that before I backspace it. And make it an angle. There we go. All right. That'll kick us off. 75 minutes. We would not be penalized. Happy days. Let's run the show. Looks looks pretty damn good to me. I don't know. All right. So we start off with a 30 rated match. We got Jack Pride cutting a promo. Uh, stating he wants a win. Pretty much he'll do anything to get it. He doesn't care, you know, what the fans think of him. Crowd booze, but he gets over. It's a good little heel promo. And he, he gets a 30 rating. He's probably got a penalty there. Yep. Penalty for his poor momentum, which, you know, sucks. Because we, we actually did work with him for that character idea. And it, it got him to warm. And then all of a sudden he's, he's cooled. Don't know what the, the go with that was. But anyway, I'm happy with that, that angle by himself. We then go into a 34 rated match uh, where... Jack Pride pulls off an upset victory, defeating Warpiece in 12.30 by pinfall with a handful of tights. So the old cheat to win for Jack Pride there. Not a terrible match. I'm happy with the 34 for these guys. You know, mid-carders, Jack's probably, you know, his momentum puts him at, I guess, lower mid-card at this point. Um, was really off his game as well, which is unfortunate for the, the overall match rating. Um, both inexperienced, both inconsistent, and then poor momentum there. The Jackie Pride. But we move on. Hopefully a little bit of momentum coming off that as well. Alright, we then go into a 43 rated brawl with Texas Hangman and Silencer. And they display some hard hitting action before the Bell Evern rings. I love a love a good typo in there. Uh but yeah, basically they start brawling before the Bell Even rings. Uh the referee, you know, they they try and gain gain control, uh, but the brawl just absolutely erupts. And the referee just calls for the bell. 43 rated angle, happy with that. Leading into their match, it's going to be pretty good. 50 rated match for 12 minutes. Very impressive. Um, even having, you know, Silence is not the greatest, uh, but he, he's good enough to be to be carried by Hangman. So we do have Texas Hangman defeating the Silencer in... 11.45 by pinfall with a choke slam. It's a good match. 55 in ring there from Hangman. Like I said, 12 minutes, not even a, a slow build. And yeah, Hangman penalized for stamina. Which uh, is something that you guys, I think it's question the mark, wants me to uh, to criticize him for uh, his stamina. I don't actually know how to do it, but we'll uh, we'll, we'll take a look in the, in the next episode. So yeah, 50 rated. Good match, very good. Probably, hopefully, hopefully it won't actually beat the main event. Anyway, it was only twelve minutes, so that's weird. I guess maybe we we need him to be in a in a twenty minute match with a slow build. 
I think he 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 does better with those, which is interesting. Uh, but yeah, twelve might be a bit too long. I don't know. I guess it is. We move on. Go into a forty-five rated match. Very unexpected for for what this match is. We have Jules Knight defeating the up and coming Wild Red Stallion in eleven thirty-seven by pinfall, illegally using the ropes for leverage. So we remember Jules Knight teaming up with Al Coleman a fair bit over over the course of the or at least the start of the year of twenty twenty three. And uh, it looks like, you know, Jules Knight might have actually picked up a few things. He's cheating to win, trying to get himself into contention. And you have to say, he's, he's essentially put a, put a big stop to the momentum of Wild Red Stallion with this victory. And uh, potentially putting himself into title contention. We'll have to wait and see what happens next episode. Uh, but yeah, Stallion and Jules Knight have great chemistry in a singles match together. So... You love to see the great chemistry. It's going to lead to to good matches like this one here, and then we got Wild Red Stallion getting better at his gimmick as well. So it's a it's a double win, triple win with the the forty five rating there as well. Thirty eight in ring from Stallion, which is good. Uh, and then we know how good Jules Knight is as well, which I, I've been very very impressed with him. Um, sort of like the uh, uh, the black horse of the series at the moment. I feel like Jules Knight is is sort of flying under the radar a little bit. Very good performances. He's somehow got 24 popularity, which I haven't really used him too much. Um, he's taken a lot of losses as well. Um, he's gotten a few wins here and there. Don't get me wrong. Uh, especially, I think some matches he's actually won with Al Coleman, despite their negative chemistry that they also have in tag team action. So as partners together. Anyway, very, very happy with that. Good, good match rating. We then go straight into another 45 rated angle. This one, the uh, the angle between Al Coleman and Roger Montero. Of course, they have a big stare down pre-match. Where we have Al Coleman looking like he wants to end Montero's career. But Roger Montero, the, the current heavyweight champion, doesn't back down. And the two are nose to nose. And they stare it out as the bell rings. The fans are going nuts. And it is the rematch here for the Rocky Mountain Wrestling heavyweight title. The main event getting us a 57 rated match. So that's actually three points better than their previous one, where we have Roger Montero, some would say pulling off another upset victory, defeating Al Coleman in 1938 by pinfall with an eagle chop. And we have Roger Montero making defense number one of the Rocky Mountain Wrestling heavyweight title so yeah roger with a 59 in-ring performance there as well 55 for coleman so definitely a, a dominant performance there from montero he's really you know showing his worth as the the current champion um and we've had coleman heel champ for for a little while now so very happy with this very happy to see where we can take him as well being montero a uh, couple of penalties. We've got physical condition for both of them. Again, they're they're sort of 30s, mid-30s for both. Uh, and then, yeah, low morale there for Coleman as well. Hopefully, we can get rid of that soon. That would be very, very beneficial. Very beneficial. Anyway, 57, finishing off, finishing off the show. That's a really good rating. Overall, we get a 54, which has been boosted up from us having a wide selection oh we're going that way i'm going this way this way this way that, that way there <laughs> uh quite a wide you know selection of angles there so i think we had the stare down we had the brawl and then we had the promo there from jack pride to to kick things off so no popularity change we maxed our pop which is perfect uh and we get the 54 overall show rating which is i think one of our that might be our best We'll, uh, we'll take a look at that, but I think that is the best show we've ever ever run. Anyway, locker room. Coleman. Uh, Coleman and Montero. Have to give him the, the praise. Actually, you know what? I'm going to give praise to Jules Knight instead. Yeah. Anyway, Coleman's pleased and Jules Knight seemed pleased. We made $96 profit from that one show alone. So we're making pretty much 100 bucks off that show uh and the post show finances 11,935 
Very good. That's that's a thousand dollars, I think. I'm pretty sure that's a thousand dollars. That's uh that's decent. That's that's really good. So we'll uh we'll advance to the end of the month here before we finish the episode, because I, I would like to check that. Um but I also want to check the popularity for Roger Montero. So let me do that. Montero is at 34 popularity. Where was he at the start? He was at 33, so he's gained a point this month. Um, I think I also want to check, where is he? Stallion, still at 15. Uh, and what about Jules Knight? Still at 24. Okay, it's not terrible. Uh, 33 there for Coleman. We've got, where is he? Hangman is at 38. Is he up one point? He is up one point. Still gaining popularity is Texas Hangman. Uh, Silencer still at 16, which is interesting. And Jack Pro's at 14. Okay. That's popularity. You know, we're not getting sort of massive increases at the moment. That's perfectly fine. Uh, let me advance a few more days here. Uh, but overall, I think that was a really good show. I should actually check. Once we uh, finish processing, I will, uh, I will check our best ever show ratings because I am genuinely curious if that is our best ever show so far, our best show for, I guess, 2023 at the moment. I think we've got potential to beat it, uh, especially at hitting the peak. I want to try and try and go all out for, for hitting the peak. Maybe we just do a fatal four-way with the, the big four, potentially. So Montero, Hangman, Holman, and Remy Sky, who's sort of a little bit on the outs at the moment. Um, I might try and push Remy a little bit next episode. I might even use him in the main event of The Climb, I think. We'll, uh, we'll give him an opportunity. Maybe him versus Jules Knight could be a good match. Maybe we give Holman and Montero the night off, potentially, allowing them to, to maybe rest their bodies a little bit. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, uh, we'll, we'll have to wait and see. I don't know if giving them a month off is going to be actually any, any sort of increase to their, to their body limb percentages. Um, that is something I would actually like to test as well. I feel like there's a lot of things that I'd like to test going forward as well. Anyway, let us have a look here. So we made $1,200 last month, $1,200 profit. That is huge. Uh, worker costs are about the same. They're slightly below last month and then slightly above from June. So that's not that bad. Obviously that the sponsorship money went up to 1,600 massive uh the merchandise starting to slow down a little bit uh and the ticket sales are pretty much the same um albeit i expect that to slightly go up even further uh now they're up to 15 popularity in the northwest region so we are literally two points away from tiny size anyway that is going to wrap up the episode guys make sure you drop a like on the video It'd be very much appreciated subscribe to the channel as well apparently remy sky I mean, lots of people have morale issues. Why do they have that? Okay, they're irritated about being left off the shows. Okay, that's frustrating. I thought I had that turned off. I guess I don't have that turned off. That's not great. That is not great. Okay. Um, why does Jules have... He was left off ravenous, but... He's upset now. I don't understand that. Anyway, I'm going to I'm going to have a look at my settings off camera here as well and make sure that that is switched off because I, I did actually want that switched off for the for the series or at least at the start of the series anyway, for, for this exact reason, uh, because that is it's not destroyed our locker room morale, but I'm assuming it's pretty damn close. So we, we definitely want to fix that up anyway. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already and make sure you turn on the notification bell. And apart from that, guys, as always, take it easy and goodbye.